Overcoming dysfunctionality in the home. You know, dysfunctionality sounds like such a sophisticated word. Uh, el mensaje tiene que ver con um, superar, no sé cómo se dice dysfunctionality en español, no creo que ni mi, mi esposa sabe cómo se dice eso, pero es cuando la, la casa, las cosas no están yendo bien, porque uh, el, el padre o la madre, los hijos, no saben hacer su función en la familia. The natural functioning family, the natural Christian family. La familia cristiana, naturalmente, tiene que estar en este, este orden. It's supposed to be in this order. Christ first, husband, wife, children. La orden es Jesús primero. El esposo, la esposa, y los hijos. This is not the norm that we have here in our area. Esto es no lo es normal que tenemos aquí en nuestra área. And I think that we're not the only ones that is not having the normal. Y pienso que no somos los únicos que estamos experimentando la, lo que no es normal. I think this has become global. Pienso que es, es algo global. Where the man is no longer taking his role as the man. Donde el hombre ya no está tomando su función como hombre. I have to deal a lot with the young people and uh, young men, and I found that our young men are no longer acting like young men. Tengo que trabajar mucho con los jóvenes y me he dado cuenta que nuestros jóvenes varones no saben actuar como jóvenes varones. You see, because the order is supposed to be Christ and then the husband. Porque la, la, el orden tiene que ser Jesucristo y después el esposo. Well, if the young men don't know how to act like a man, then how can he be in the right order? Si el joven no sabe uh, funcionar como varón, ¿cómo va a estar la correcta orden? orden? Here is the dilemma. Men today, right now, they did a survey. And they did a survey and asked the men how many of them felt that being a father was important. Hicieron una encuesta. En esa encuesta uh, hicieron esta pregunta. ¿Cuántos de ustedes piensan que ser padre es importante? And only 16% of the men said that was important. On, nada más 16 percent de los hombres dijo que eso era importante. See, the other said, it's her fault. She's the one that let me do it. She got to deal with it. Los otros dijeron, es la culpa de ella. Ella me dejó, así que es su culpa. See, it used to be that having a child meant that you would take responsibility for that child. Antes pensamos que si tuviste un hijo o una hija, ibas a tomar la responsabilidad de esos niños. But that's not the current trend. Así no es como es ahora. We have some of our women who are the ones that have to provide for their kids, even though they have a man in the house. Algunas de esas mujeres tienen que proveer por los hijos aún mientras hay un hombre en la casa. Then the husband comes home and says, you got to take care of me. You got to take care of me. But he's not doing any of his part. Llega el hombre a la casa y dice, me tiene que cuidar a mí, pero él no está haciendo nada como el hombre en la casa. We lost what it is to be a man under Christ. Perdimos lo que es ser un hombre debajo de Cristo. Así que vamos a ver cómo es que debemos de ser, como dice la Biblia, que debemos de ser como hombres debajo de Cristo. So we're going to look into the word and find out what it is that we're supposed to be uh, a man under Christ. Then we're going to find out what it is to be a wife under the husband. 
Después vamos a ver lo que es ser una mujer debajo de su esposo. And finally, we have our kids. The kids are under the wife. Y los niños después están debajo de la esposa. How many already feel that this is going to be a doozy? <laughs> ¿Cuántos ya se dieron cuenta que ese no va a ser fácil? <laughs> Deuteronomy 6.5, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Deuteronomio 6.5, amáis al Señor tu Dios con todo tu corazón, con toda tu alma, y con toda tu strength, fuerza. That's good. Translating in Spanish and using old Spanish at the same time. Oh, Father, help me. <laughs> oh, goodness. If we start with this verse, love God with everything. We have no problem of staying in order. Si empezamos con esta escritura, amamos a Dios con todo. No tenemos ningún problema estando en orden. Our problem is when we love ourselves more than we love God. El problema que tenemos es cuando empezamos a, a amarnos a nosotros mismos más que amamos a Dios. A dysfunctional family is a family in which conflict, misbehavior, And often child neglect or abuse on a part of an individual parent occurs continuously and regularly leading other members to accommodate such actions. Children sometimes grow up in such families with the understanding that such a situation is normal. Una familia que no está en orden es una familia que tienen conflictos. Uh, tienen hijos que se portan mal o a veces que no le están uh, prestando atención a los niños y hay abusos de los parientes. Eso es algo que pasa continuamente y los otros miembros de la familia tienen que ajustarse para arreglar esta situación. El problema que tenemos es que los niños que nacen en un hogar así piensan que esto es normal. Most of our families are dysfunctional families. Muchas de nuestras familias son familias que no están correcto basea, basado a la Biblia. Let's look at some of this. I, in my own family, Why would my family be dysfunctional? En mi propia familia, vamos a ver, ¿cómo que mi familia no está actuando correctamente? We don't have the abuse and neglect. No tenemos el abuso o no prestarle atención a los niños. We do have conflict and we have misbehavior. Sí tenemos conflictos y los muchachos por dándose mal. See, this will make my family to be a dysfunctional family. Esto sería que hace que mi, mi familia no esté portándose bien correctamente con la escritura. Now, what does that have to do with me? You know, I, I counsel somebody, and at the end of the counsel, that's what he says. What does that have to do with me? <laughs> I think we should all come up to that conclusion. What does it have to do with me? Can I fix the behavior? Puedo arreglar cómo se están portando. Well, we can curve it. How do we curve it? Punishment. Punishment. And more punishment. And more punishment. But sometimes that doesn't fix the problem. It doesn't. Sometimes punishment doesn't fix the problem. Come on. A veces, um, ¿cómo se dice punishment en español? Castigo. A veces castigo no arregla la situación. 
que castiga y castiga y castiga y castiga y todavía sigue lo mismo. What's going to happen with that kid when they leave the house? ¿Qué va a pasar con ese niño o esa niña cuando se va de la casa? They're going to bring punishment on themselves. Ellos van a tener su propio castigo. What do we do to make it worse? We keep grown-ups in the house that we should have let out of the house. Lo hacemos peor porque dejamos que ya que los niños tienen la edad de irse a ellos mismos o todavía lo tenemos en nuestra casa. Punishment is no longer working. So you got to let the world punish them. El castigo no está funcionando, así que tenemos que dejar que el mundo lo castigue. This is the social exercise. Es un ejercicio social. If your child got arrested for smoking weed. Si tu hijo um, fue arrestado por fumar marihuana. Pastor, what would you do if Elijah was arrested for smoking weed? Pastor, ¿qué es lo que va a hacer si a Gaya lo arrestan por estar fumando marihuana? I'm glad you asked me. Gracias por hacerme esa pregunta. I would leave him there. Yo lo voy a dejar ahí mismo. Why would you leave him there? What kind of parenting is that? He knows better by now. So hopefully this will fix him. Ahora tiene suficiente edad para saber el bien y el mal. Esperamos que esto lo arregle. See, we have these parents that instead of raising men, you're raising boys. Tenemos estos parientes en vez de crear hombres, están creando niños. Because we take away all penalty. Porque quitamos todo el castigo. So how are they going to learn? ¿Cómo van a aprender? Now, see, this is what I pray. Father, don't kill them. Esto es lo que yo oro. Señor, no lo mates. Go ahead and punish him. Don't kill him, Lord God. Dale, Señor, castigalo, pero no lo mates. Let him learn better. Que aprenda mejor. Oh, Pastor, you're just saying that because you don't have a difficult child. Oh, Pastor, nada más está diciendo esto porque no tiene ningún hijo que son difícil. I will invite you to my house. Te invito a mi casa. See, we have a problem in our house. Tenemos un problema en nuestra casa. My kids get away with stuff. Mis hijos no le hacen nada. They get away with stuff because they're my kid. No le castigan porque son mis hijos. Well, I'm like, please punish him. And the, Castigalo, por favor. No, que no podemos. No, we can't. Why not? He's your son. Es tu hijo. ¿Qué le hace a ese niño? What do you do to that kid? Oh, he'll be punished. Treat him like that kid. Trátalo como ese niño. Le castiga a ese niño, le castiga al mío también. We can't do that, Pastor. We love you too much. Well, you may love me, but you hate my child. Tal vez me amas a mí, pero odias a mi hijo. See, the word of God says this. The parent who does not chastise his child hates him. La Biblia dice esto. El padre que no corría a su hijo o a su hija lo odia. Ay, pastor, es que me, me duele que él está lo odias. Oh, pastor, is that it hurts me? You hate him. No, yo no lo odio. No, I don't hate him. Yes, you do. Sí, lo odias. 
How I hate him. Because you're going to make him get in worse trouble. Porque le estás enseñando ahora que él tiene que hacer algo peor. You know, I'd rather whoop my child than have the police beat him. Yo prefiero darle a mi hijo, darle su correazo, que la, la policía le dé con el palo. Eso que yo prefiero. Yo prefiero correr en mi hijo. I prefer to chastise my own child. I think we need to switch what the devil has started because he's trying to topple over the man. Tenemos que arreglar lo que el demonio, los demonios están haciendo porque está tratando de tumbar al hombre. We start at home. The order of a family. The husband submits to God. La orden de la familia. El hombre se humilla a Dios. El hombre se humilla a Dios. See, we have men that come here, and they'll sit here, and I'll hurt their feelings, and you won't see them again. Hay hombres que vienen aquí, se sientan, y cuando yo hablo, le duele los sentimientos y se van. When did men become such sissies that the pastor can hurt their feelings? ¿Cómo, ¿Qué es lo que pasó a los hombres que el pastor puede decir algo y le duele los sentimientos? When did that become okay? ¿Cuándo fue que alguien dijo que se puede hacer esto? You know, because me, if you said something and it's true, I'm going to go home and I'm going to say, you know what, suck it up. It's the truth. You need to get yourself together. Si me dices algo a mí y es verdad, y me lastimó, yo voy a ir a la casa y yo voy a decirme a mí mismo, me dijo la verdad. ¿Sabe qué? Me tengo que arreglar porque eso es la verdad. I'm not going to be like, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm not going to go to that church no more. He hurt my feelings. Yo, ay, es que me lastimó los sentimientos ese pastor, siempre está hablando de mí. The word of God comes in and it comes in and it does a work. And the work is supposed to be from the inside out. La palabra de Dios viene y empieza a hacer un trabajo y el trabajo empieza de adentro hacia afuera. So that means that if a word comes and the word comes in and makes a difference and you're hearing the right word. Significa que si oyes una palabra y lo sientes de adentro, estás oyendo la, la uh, palabra correcta. That's not what we want to hear. We want to hear what makes us feel good. So that's whatever makes us feel good is hurting our family. Queremos venir y oír una palabra bien bonita que nos hace sentir bien, pero esas mismas palabras bonitas están afectando nuestra familia negativamente. Husband first. Submit to God. Husband number two is the head of the household. We have problems with that. We have problems here with that. I'm sure nationally we have problems with that. El esposo tiene que ser el primero en, en, la, en la casa. El primero. Aquí nosotros tenemos problemas con eso. Mundialmente pienso que tenemos problemas con eso. Let me explain. There's no woman that wants to give herself up to an idiot. No hay ninguna mujer que quiere dar su autoridad a un idiota. See, we got a lot of amens on that one. Muchos están diciendo amen. See, the man got to get himself together. El hombre tiene que venir a arreglarse antes que se case. He is supposed to get that before he gets married. Before he say, would you marry me? I'm a man under God. Antes que se case, el hombre tiene que decir, yo soy un hombre debajo de Dios. Let me tell you what a real man does. Ya me decirte lo que hace un hombre 
uh, que es realmente hombre. If I hear a noise in the middle of the night, si oigo un sonido en el medio de la noche, I don't even have to tell the leg. Ni le tengo que decir la pierna. Ya sin saber, ya estoy parado. Without even noticing, I'm already standing up. I'm already walking to the door. Ya empiezo ya a caminar a la puerta. Next thing I know, I've looked through the whole entire house. Ya, cuando ya me di cuenta, vi todo rinconcito de la casa. Because I heard something. Porque oí algo. And I feel that I'm the one that got to protect my family. Yo soy que tengo que proteger mi familia. So when I hear something, así que cuando oigo algo, I don't say, honey, go check it out. Yo no digo, mi amor, ve y mira qué es eso. Sometimes I'm walking out of my room thinking I may have to fight somebody. A veces estoy saliendo de mi cuarto y estoy pensando, tal vez tengo que pelear con alguien. But I'm walking stretching. Estoy caminando y me estoy estirando. Just in case. Por si acaso. Because I have this mindset. Porque esto lo que yo pienso. Me vas a tener que matar a mí antes. You don't have to kill me first. I'm the protector of my family. Yo soy el que protege mi familia. Watch these commercials today. Mira los comerciales en la televisión. You're going to see the opposite. Va a ver lo opuesto. Creek. Honey, go see what's that. Oye un sonido. El esposo le dice a la esposa, mi amor, ve a ver qué es eso. We're teaching our men that it's okay to be sissies. I think there are times to fight. I'm old school. I think there are times to put your dukes up. I think it's time that what you said about my wife, what? Do y'all notice y'all pastors are not scared of people? Yo pienso que a veces es tiempo de pelear. Por algunas cosas tenemos que pelear. Algunas cosas tenemos que Ponernos en la cara de otra persona. ¿Se ha dado cuenta que su pastor no le tiene miedo a nadie? I'm not no superhuman. It's not that I feel like I have some super strength. I'm leading by example. No es que yo soy superman y me pienso que soy tan gran cosa. Estoy siendo líder por el ejemplo que doy. We had someone that came to church and always had a gun. Always had a gun. Una persona que siempre tenía una pistola. Always, uh, right there. One day I asked him to come up for an example, and I told him to pick me up and move me. Un día, en un domingo, yo le dije, por ejemplo, que venga adelante y que me recoja y me mueva. He put every ounce of strength he could. Puso toda la fuerza que él podía. But he could not move me. Pero no me podía mover a mí. Why couldn't he move me? ¿Por qué no me podía mover? Because I'm strong too. Porque yo también tengo fuerzas. We had one thing established. Tuvimos algo ya de acuerdo. If he were to fight me, I can fight him back. Si él fuera a pelear conmigo, yo le puedo pelear de nuevo a él. So he respected me. A mí me tenía respeto. But he didn't respect no one else. No tenía respeto por nadie más. He only respects me. Why? Because I know how to speak his language. ¿Por qué me tiene respeto? Porque yo sé hablar el lenguaje de él. We both know how to speak. You know what? I'll take the suit off and we'll get it on. And after we, I finish breaking a few bones and you go to the hospital, I'll come and pray for you that God heals you quickly. Oh 
Now, some of our listeners, we lost them because he's so violent. Let me tell you what I am talking about. Our women want men that are protectors. Nuestras mujeres quieren una persona que le puede proteger. They are not looking for the pretty boy. Oh, hi, how are you? Ella no está buscando el hombre. Hola, ¿cómo estás? They're looking for the man that... Uh, get behind me, honey. Get, get, get right behind me. Oh, 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 I just feel a surge from the Holy Spirit. See, because the order is... Get behind me because I'm going to protect you. I'm your protector. I'm, I'm going to, God ordained me to protect you. I'm your protector. As Jesus Christ is mine. Yo soy el que te va a proteger. Es mi trabajo. Dios me ha ungido para ser tu protector. Como Jesucristo es el protector mío. See, our women are yearning for a man that can be in the form of a man. Not having the man organ, because everybody has that. Las mujeres quieren un hombre que tenga la posición de hombre. No el órgano de hombre, porque todos los hombres tienen eso. I have two daughters, and both daughters, they're yearning. I want to find a good husband. I want to find a husband that I can be under him and be like, this is what God made me for. Si tengo dos hijas que están buscando por un buen hombre, porque ellos quieren estar, Dios me hizo para estar debajo de este hombre. See, a man does not limit his wife. A good man. A good man doesn't limit his wife. A weak man limits his wife. Un buen hombre no le pone límite a su esposa. Un hombre débil le pone límite a su esposa. A strong man is always, go ahead, honey. Go ahead with your best self. Come on, do it, baby. You got this going on. Yeah, you look good. Ooh, I'm going to have to pray because other people are going to see you wearing that. You look good. Otro hombre se estaría, <laughs> amor, te ve bien bonita con eso. Oye, voy a orar mucho que nadie te dé cuenta que la belleza que yo tengo, porque eres una belleza hermosa. Cuando viene de negocio, dale, mi amor, dale, que puedes, lo estás haciendo. See, a good man who is strong and masculine and on his own self is not afraid to allow his wife to be able to do things which will produce greatness for the home. But a weak man makes misery to the wife. Un buen hombre se siente bien cuando su esposa se está haciendo algo que produce para la casa. Pero un hombre débil hace la mujer miserable. Wife, submit to your husband. He's yours. Esposa, sométete a tu esposo. Es tu esposo. You pick them. Lo escogiste. This is where I say it's your fault. Aquí donde digo que es tu culpa. Because you picked them. Porque lo escogiste. So now that you picked them, you stuck with him. Ahora que lo escogiste, estás con él. Don't come up here talking about pastor, I want to get a divorce. No me diga que quieres un divorcio. I don't want to hear it. You better pray he dies. I don't believe in divorce. You picked them. You, you picked them. Don't you go kill them. That's not what I said. No lo mates. Yo no dije eso. See, there was a policeman that he called, and he says, I, I have a situation right here. I don't know what to do. Un policía que llamó y dijo, tengo una situación, no sé qué hacer. Said, this old lady shot her husband in the foot for walking on her wet floor. 
esta ancianita le disparó a su esposo en el pie por, uh, uh, por pisar en su piso mojado. So he got a call back. Have you arrested her? Sí, que le llamó y las ha arrestado. And the policeman responded, no, the floor is still wet. <laughs> el policía dijo, no, no lo ha arrestado porque el piso todavía está mojado. The wife submit to the husband while the husband is leading the household with God's covering. See, here's where we're missing it. If I am under the shadow of the Almighty, I'm going to lead with that shadow with me. Aquí, el esposo, la esposa, sometete a tu esposo mientras el esposo está sometiendo bajo la cobertura de Dios. Es fácil ser líder cuando estoy debajo de la cobertura de Dios. We're lacking leaders in today's time. No tenemos líderes en el tiempo de hoy. It used to be that men would always be the one who would bring their wives to church. Antes era que los hombres estarían, traían sus esposas a la iglesia. Now it's the wife praying for the husband to come to church. Ahora las esposas están orando que el esposo llegue a la iglesia. What's wrong with our men? ¿Qué le pasa a nuestros hombres? Here is the problem. Aquí tenemos nuestro problema. Our men are a bunch of children. They love to play with big toys on Sundays. Nuestros hombres son niños que quieren jugar con sus juguetes grandes los domingos. They go fishing. They go golfing. They watch sports. They go driving around. They ride their motorcycles. Van a pescar, a jugar golf. Ver juego de fútbol, ahí manejando su motocicleta, all on Sundays. Siempre los domingos. Children. Niños. Our men have become children. Nuestros hombres ahora son niños. I think we need to pray for men to become men. Tenemos que orar para que nuestros hombres sean realmente hombres. Children obey parents while they set the correct path for their future. Children obey parents. Oh, we're going to talk a little bit about that because that's the area that we have conflict in our house is the children obeying parents. That's, that's the area that my house is dysfunctional. Niños obedecen a sus padres. Y vamos a hablar más de eso porque esa es la área donde nosotros en nuestra familia tenemos problema. Husband, love your wife just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word. Esposos, amen a su esposa como uh, Cristo amó a la iglesia que dio, se dio completamente para ella, para hacerla santa, lavándola con agua y la palabra de Dios. Husband loves your wife like how Christ loved the church. Esposo, ame a su esposa como Jesús amó a la iglesia. How did Christ love the church? ¿Cómo que Jesús amó a la iglesia? What? It cost him this hand. And this hand. And the crown. And the feet. He loved the church that he gave himself up completely 
for her. Ese es cuanto Jesús amó a la iglesia. Lo amó con esta mano y con esta mano y con la corona en la cabeza y con los pies que él se dio completamente para ella. Men, do you love your wife with this hand and with this hand and with the crown over your head and with your feet? Ama a tu mujer con la izquierda y la derecha, con la cabeza y con los pies. Te digo que eso no es normal en un matrimonio. I tell you, this is not normal for a marriage where the man will give up himself for his wife. Donde el hombre da su todo para su esposa. See, I have a 20-year-old girl that if she brings a boy into my house, I'm calling him a boy because she is my girl. I hope that she doesn't bring a boy. Y you understand? I hope that she brings a man. But I don't want him to be no 40-year-old man. So, you know, I revert back to a boy. You understand? Well, you understand where I'm coming from, right? <laughs> When she brings one to my house, I'm going to have one rule. Love God with everything. Love God with everything. If you can love God with everything, my daughter will be fine with you. Cuando mi hija que tiene 20 años traiga un, un joven a mi casa, le voy a hacer una pregunta. ¿Amas a Dios con todo? Porque si amas a Dios con todo, vas a cuidar a mi hija bien. Pero si no amas a Dios con todo, no va a ser útil para mi hija. One simple rule. He doesn't have to be good looking. I know she hopes he is. Él no tiene que ser un muchacho que se vea muy bien. Yo estoy seguro que ella sí quiere eso. He doesn't have to be, you know, exceptionally strong and muscular. No tiene que tener músculos, which I, I'm sure she's hoping that he would have that too. He doesn't have to be exceptionally smart. No tiene que ser muy inteligente, pero yo estoy seguro que ella quiere que sea también. You know, I'm sure she wants him to be intelligent. But as long as he loves God with everything, yes, yes. all this other stuff will come. Si él ama a Dios con todo, todas esas cosas van a venir. What's more important? Love God with everything. ¿Qué es más importante? Ama a Dios con todo. Let me prove to you. Déme probar esto. See, when you love God with everything and God tells you to do something because you love God with everything, you're going to move to wherever he told you to do. No matter how much it costs you, you'll move to what he told you to do and you're constantly becoming the image of how, what he wants you to be. Man, who doesn't want to be around someone who has, is becoming more like Christ. Who, who doesn't want to be around that? Si, si tienes una persona que ama a Dios con todo, y Dios le dice que haga algo, esa persona lo va a hacer. No importa cuánto le cuesta, si que al final va a ser una mejor persona. For me to love my wife like how Jesus loved the church, I have to remember that it's going to hurt. Que yo ame mi esposa como Jesús amó a la iglesia significa que hay momentos que va a doler. See, there's some things that hurt. Spending money to me is painful. Hay alguna cosa que para mí duele. Gastar dinero a mí me duele. My wife loves to travel. That cost. Mi esposa le gusta estar viajando. Eso cuesta. When she travels, she likes to eat. Cuando viaja, ella le gusta comer. 
She likes to take pictures and buy pictures. Ella quiere tomar fotos y comprar fotos. She wants to stay in somewhere comfortable. Ella se quiere dormir en un lugar bien confortable. Comfort, confortable. Cómodo. At the end of my vacation, I look at the, what I've paid on. The Lord lives. The Lord gives. The Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. <laughs> Al final, cuando regresamos de la vacación, esto de que Dios da y Dios quita. Bendecido sea el nombre del Señor. I'm like, this is my cost of loving my wife like how Christ loved the church. Este es el costo que tengo para amar a mi esposa como Jesús amó a la iglesia. I got to stop thinking, this costs too much. Tengo que dejar de estar pensando, esto cuesta mucho. Instead, I'm like, Lord God, I thank you, I had it, I can spend it. En vez de estoy pensando, Señor, gracias te doy por darme dinero que ahora se lo puedo gastar en ella. See, that took a lot of work for me. Because, man, my beginning years of being married, I was miserable. Eso tomó mucho tiempo para mí porque al principio de mi matrimonio yo estaba miserable. That cost, and 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 the next thing cost, and the cost, and the cost, and the cost, and cost. And I was like, oh, she just wastes. She just wastes everything. I had to learn. Al principio, eso cuesta, y eso cuesta, y eso cuesta, y eso cuesta, y eso cuesta. Ay, ella nada más gasta todo. Pero tuve que aprender. I picked this child out of her home. Took her from her parents. Who gave her whatever she wanted. To bring her into my house. And then I'm telling her she can't have stuff. Yo saqué a esta joven de su casa donde sus padres le daban todo lo que ella quería. Y la traigo a mi casa. Y ahora puedo, le digo, no puedes conseguirlo. Oh, no. Uh -uh. I'm going to give you more than your mom and dad gave you. I'm going to treat you better so you don't want to go back home. No, en vez ahora pienso, te voy a tratar mejor que tu mamá y tu papá. Porque yo no quiero que regreses a ello. I want you to stay here with me. I want you to feel like this was worth it. Quiero que empiece que esto me valió la pena. Wife, submit yourself unto your own husband as it is fit the Lord. Husband who loves your wife and be not bitter against them. What? Why is that in scripture? Esposas, sometete a tu otra esposa porque esto es correcto. Esposos, ame a tu esposa y no sea rencoroso contra ella. Not to be bitter against her. How does a husband become bitter against his wife? ¿Cómo el esposo se pone rencoroso contra su esposa? If you ask that same question to some of our wives, they can tell you a list of things. Si le pregunto eso mismo a nuestras esposas aquí, te dan una lista de cosas. Pastor, he always brings back things that happened a long time ago. Pastor, siempre se recuerda las cosas que pasó hace tiempo. Como si pasaron ayer. Like it just happened yesterday. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 says, Love keeps no records of wrong. Primera Corintios capítulo 13 dice que el amor no se queda con record de las cosas que fueron hechas malas. I love you, so I'm going to choose to forget. Te amo, así que me voy a olvidar. That takes work. But there goes that right hand. I'm going to forget. Are we out with that? 
How many of you love for stuff that you did 15 years ago, you hear it all over again? Anybody here? You love to hear all the bad stuff you did 15 years ago? Love to hear the stuff you did 15 years Bad stuff? You like to hear? No, he's sitting there kidding. It's like he, he's doing double action. No, yeah, I'm raising my hand, but say no. Let me remind you what you did to me. You know how you hurt my feelings. Yeah, I mean, come on now. We got we to gotta let that go. See, I have a sister that I broke her nose, and I was six years old, so that means she was eight. And I broke her nose. There was one time we were having a family discussion, and she said, Rem remember when you broke my nose? Girl, I'm in my 50s. Ah, that's 46 years ago. Girl, let it go. Let it go. Feel like frozen. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> Don't want to hold back anymore. Si, yo tengo una hermana y cuando yo tenía seis años, yo le rompí la nariz. Sí, significaba que ella tenía ocho. Y nos juntamos y ella dijo, ¿te recuerdas cuando me rompiste la nariz? Y oye, eso fue hace 45 años. Ya suéltalo. Suéltalo. What happened is that when you get stuck on something, you become bitter instead of being better. Cuando te quedas con eso en la mentalidad de lo que me pasó hace tiempo, no te mueves hacia adelante, te quedas ahí estancado. I want to get better, so I need to get over being bitter. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Hijos, obeden a sus padres en todo, porque esto le agradece al Señor. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Padres, no provoques a sus hijos a uh, anger. Um, perdón. Enojo. Porque a uh, otro discouraged. No sé. <laughs> Next time, I'm going to have to have the verse in Spanish so I can read it from there. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh. Now, in this verse, it has the words slaves. So if you look at the King James Version, it says, Slaves, obey in all things your masters. Sirvientes, sean obedientes a todo a los no, I don't know if I can say masters in Spanish. La persona encargada. All right, I know it says slave, and I know we don't have slavery, and I know slavery is a bad thing. Got it, okay? Got it. Know it. No history. It was never a good thing. But all of us are servants of somebody. All right. Entiendo que ser esclavo no es una cosa buena, nunca ha sido una cosa buena, nunca va a ser algo bueno. Pero todos nosotros somos sirvientes de alguien. That means I work for somebody and someone pays me. Eso significa que yo trabajo por alguien y alguien me paga a mí. So let's look at it from that standpoint of view, all right? Not with eye service or men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. Esto no lo puedo decir en español porque no sé cómo decir I, I, I service ni men pleasers. Así que voy a tratar lo mejor posible. No solo cuando me está mirando o solo porque quiero que piensa bien de mí. Si I service is, he's looking at me. Y'all have seen it where the worker decides to work only when the boss is around. Y'all have seen it. Ustedes todos han visto eso, las personas empiezan a trabajar porque ahí está el jefe, vamos, 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 y, y, and as soon as he's gone, oh, he's gone, he's gone, he's gone, he's gone, here he comes, here he comes, we all have seen it, we all have seen it, you have to see my two boys, they do the same thing, they're outside and they don't know I'm looking at them right, right from the window just looking at them and they're just there having a ball just talking to each other and just stop and just looking at each other and talking and talking and talking and uh, and then they hear me uh walking towards them and i uh, yeah uh, you liar i saw you the whole time 
Saw you. Saw you faking. That's why it takes you so long. To, I, I tell my, house, and my kids in my house, I can do all your chores in 15 minutes. I, and I have too. I'm not talking about 15 minutes for each. Both of their chores, I can do them all in 15 minutes. How can a 51-year-old do chore of a 14-year-old and a 13-year-old in 15 minutes combined and it takes them two hours? How is that? ¿Cómo va a ser en nuestra casa? Yo puedo hacer todo lo de mis dos hijos en 15 minutos. Pero le toma a ellos dos horas. Why? They're the eye service. Y están en esa sección de servicio porque nada más lo ven. How many are in church do things because eye service? Oh, pastor's there so I can go work. Pastor's not there, I'm not going to work. We feel bad for Donna and Sela because we only know that their job is done because it's done. You imagine coming into church and the church is dirty? What happened to Sela? What happened to Donna? Are they not feeling good? Why is the church dirty? We had one time where Donna and Sela were not here and someone else was in charge of cleaning and we came into a dirty church. We sure did. And I was, I didn't even know they left someone else in charge. And so I came to, what in the world? Why is, why is this thing full of trash? Oh, Donna's not here and Sela's not here. That doesn't answer why this is full of trash. Well, you weren't around, Pastor. If you were around, it would have gotten picked up because you were there. That's eye service. Haciendo las cosas solamente para que te vean haciéndolo. Man pleasing. Oh, I just want to always please you. Wait, that's not necessarily a bad thing, is it? Not necessarily, but I'm going to go where it's bad. Okay? Haciendo las cosas para uh, agradar a una persona. Normalmente eso no es malo. Pero voy a enseñar cómo es malo. If Donna is doing a service for me that she would not do for her husband, she is man-pleasing. Si Donna está haciendo algo para mí que no hace por su propio esposo, ella lo está haciendo solamente para agradarme a mí. See, I feel that you should be giving your best to your man. Yo pienso que debes dar lo mejor a tu hombre. So when you come over here and you're going to do something for pastor, you should have done better for your own husband. Si vas a hacer algo para pastor, debería de hacer algo mejor para tu propio esposo. Now, if you're going to do it for God, you do it better than you did it for your husband. Si vas a hacer para Dios, algo mejor que le da tu esposo. Don't get me and God confused. We're not the same thing. I, I'm, I'm a man of God, but I am not God. <laughs> so if you're going to do something for me, don't exceed what you give me than what you will give to your husband. Because if my wife does that, I'm going to be mad. Si mi esposa le da más a otro hombre que me da a mí, yo voy a estar bien enojado. I'm going to be home and it's like, ooh, the green monster is going to be all over me. Voy a estar en mi casa bien celoso. I'm going to be ready for that argument too. Voy a estar listo para este argumento. Um, ¿Y por qué? Why? See, I know my wife. The moment my daughters get married, she's going to want to help their husbands. And I'm going to be at home minding my own business. Yo conozco a mi esposa. De pronto mis hijas se casan, ella va a querer ayudar a los esposos de ellos. Y yo le voy a decir, mira, fíjate a ti misma. See, I know her. She's going to want to be helpful. 
It's just being helpful. I understand how she is. Helpful. But sometimes helping is not helping. Sometimes helping is teaching the husband of your daughter to be a child. Oh, every time he comes around, I give him some money. Why? Why are you giving the man some money? Why? I just want to be helpful. You're not helping. You're creating a crutch. Oh, todo el tiempo que viene el esposo, yo le doy dinero. ¿Por qué? Ay, que estoy ayudando. Es el esposo de mi hija. Le estoy dando. ¿Por qué? No estás ayudando. Estás creando un niño que siempre va a necesitar tu ayuda. See, it's very different that it's your birthday and here's $200. Es algo muy diferente que es tu cumpleaños y aquí tienes 200 dólares. It has to be something special. Tiene que ser algo especial. Oh, I'm meddling now. No, I'm not. It's your ch children. You're the one going to have to teach them how to deal with their own future. You can help them or you can break them. When my daughter gets married and my daughter gives me a call and says, Dad, I need to borrow some money. Okay. Put your husband on the phone. Si llega el día que mi hija me llama y dice, Papá, necesito prestar uh, algo de dinero. Ok. Pon tu esposo en el teléfono. First thing is, you're the head of the house. Why in the world you have my daughter calling me? Eres la cabeza de tu casa porque tiene mi hija llamando a mí. You need something from the man, you come to me like a man. ¿Quieres algo del hombre? Tiene que venir hacia mí como un hombre. Dad, we had this accident to happen. The accident caused us to fall behind on some bills. I need to borrow some money for this period of time. Well, son, I understand accidents. Accidents do happen, and I can understand where you're coming from. So this time I'll help you. Did y'all get it? Papá, lo que pasó, tuvimos un accidente, y por el accidente no tuvimos suficientes fondos, y necesito prestar algo de dinero por un tiempecito. Ah, bueno, accidentes pasan. Como entiendo que accidentes pasan, esta vez te lo voy a prestar. Now, notice that it's this time I'm going to let you borrow. Esta vez te voy a dejar prestar. Why only this time? First of all, if you never pay back, that's the end of you borrowing. Primero, si no lo pagas, ya no puedes prestar. See, the Bible tells me something that when I lend money, I shouldn't expect to be repaid. Did y'all know that? that? That's in the Bible. La Biblia dice que cuando yo presto dinero, que yo no debo de uh, esperar que me lo paguen. So that means I'm only going to let you borrow money I don't need. Sí que significa que te voy a dejar prestar dinero que yo no necesito. I'm not going to give you my mortgage money because I need that. I'm not going to give you my car payment money because I need that. I'm not going to give you my food money because I need that. I'm going to give you what I have left over. It might help and it might not. Yo necesito dinero para mi casa, pagar mi casa, pagar mi, mi carro, pagar mi comida. Así que si tengo extra, de eso te lo presto. So I'm giving you something that I don't need. I'm giving you of my excess. So if you don't pay me back, we're good. Te estoy dando de lo extra. Te lo estoy prestando. Así que si no me lo pagas, yo estoy bien. But you're not. Pero la persona que está prestando no lo es. 
See, because now they ruined it for themselves. Because now they can't borrow again. Ellos lo dañaron porque ahora no pueden prestar de nuevo. I've had plenty of people who come and let me, Pastor, I need, I need, how much you need? I need $8,000. Why do you need $8,000? My house was just put on foreclosure, and I have four daughters, and my in-laws live with us, and, and I really need it. Because of your daughters and your in-laws, I'll let you borrow it. If it's you, I won't give you a dime. Because of your daughter and your in-laws, I'll let you borrow it. There you go, 8,000. Pía una persona, pastor, yo necesito que me preste dinero. ¿Cuánto necesita? 8,000. ¿Por qué? Me están quitando la casa. Y sabe, tengo mis cuatro hijas. Y los padres de mi esposa viven con nosotros. Sí que lo necesito. Por tus hijas y tu esposo, y tu, la, la, los padres de tu esposo, te lo voy a prestar. Didn't pay me back. Did not pay me back. Didn't pay me back. A few months later, pastor, I need. Why? The house is on foreclosure again. Pastor, necesito que me preste dinero nuevo. Nunca me pagó. No me dio ni un centavo. ¿Por qué necesita? Me están quitando la casa nuevo. I'm sorry. I can't give you anything. Because I gave you and you didn't pay back. Perdón, no te puedo dar nada. Porque te lo presté y no me pagaste nada. You know what they did? They left the church because that's going to hurt me. ¿Qué es lo que hicieron? Se fueron a la iglesia porque eso me va a hacer a mí daño. That didn't hurt me. It's not hurting me now. I don't think it's going to ever hurt me. Why? Because they cost me $8,000. <laughs> That's one-sided, right? Eso no me dolió a mí. ¿Por qué? Ellos me costaron ocho mil dólares. So what we have to do? They leave. Oh, that's fine. You're going to cost somebody else because you haven't learned. You've gone through, but you haven't learned. So now you're bound to repeat it over and over and over. Eventually the house, you're going to lose it anyway. Because you didn't learn. So all of this is about learning. Some of you are still with me. The others are like, oh, hurry up and finish. Wives, submit your, to your own husband. Man, we keep hearing this. We have it in Ephesians. We have it in Colossians. Back to Ephesians. Oh, my goodness. I guess God really means this. Oh, sure. Wives, submit to your own husband. As to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and he is himself its savior. Now as the church submit to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Esposas, someteos, someteos a vuestro... Oh, she gave me old Spanish. Who help me, Lord Jesus. Esposa, someteos a vuestros propios esposos como al Señor, porque el esposo es cabeza de su esposa, así como Cristo es cabeza y salvador de la iglesia, la cual es su cuerpo. Así como la iglesia se somete a Cristo, también las esposas deben someterse a sus esposos en todo. I did good. Gonna be like Donna. Yay, me. <laughs> <laughs> now, Jesus submitted himself to God. So now wives have to submit to their husbands the same way. Man, here we go back to Jesus. That's hard to beat. 
Jesús se sometió, sometió a la voluntad de su padre. Así también la esposa se debe someter a su esposo. Pastor, you're making it really hard. My husband is a knucklehead. Pastor, lo está haciendo bien difícil. Mi esposo es cabezón. How do I do this? ¿Cómo hago esto? Pray. Ora. See, if my wife was right here, she'll tell you this works. Si mi esposa estuviera aquí ahora mismo, le dice, esto funciona. Because you know, whenever there was a problem with me, cuando había algún problema conmigo, she took it to God. Ella se lo llevó a Dios. And she will pray like this. Y oraba así. Father, he's your child. Señor, ese es tu hijo. You know how to fix him. Sabes cómo arreglarlo. And I need you to fix him. Y yo necesito que lo arregles. Next thing I know, I was getting my butt, butt whipped. Me di cuenta que Dios me estaba dando unas palizas a mí. I mean, he just had life just whoop, a whoop, a whoop. Tenía la vida que me estaba pegando. Every second I turn around and I got hit again. You know, I felt like a Gumby or something. Just like rubber guy. Just getting hit left and right and just getting hit. Come home all beat up. Some of us don't understand. We call, start saying it's the devil. The devil was hitting, whooping me. No, that's God doing that. Dios me estaba usando el, la vida para darme una paliza. Y llegaba a la casa, pero ya bien cansado porque todo el día me estaban dando golpes. See, we get these people that said the devil is a liar. And starts blaming on the devil. When it's like, no, you're the devil. It's like, you, you got to fix yourself. You got to line up to the word of God. It is you. You're not leading correctly. Lead correctly. Wives, learn how to pray this way. And then hands off. Oh, my goodness. Esposas, empiecen a orar así. Y después quiten la mano. What do I mean hands off? You pray for it. God start whooping on that man and you try to fix it. Oraste que Dios le, le empiece a arreglar la, la, lo que le pasa a tu esposo y de pronto que le dan está tratando de arreglar algo. Ay, pobrecito mi esposo, pobrecito, poor, my poor husband. Let him get his whooping. Hands off. Hands off. Father, whoop him good, but don't kill him. Señor, dale una buena paliza, pero no lo mates. Yo lo quiero. I love him. Whoop him good, but don't kill him. If we need men to be men, which we do, because only our men can teach our boys to be men. Nosotros necesitamos los hombres que sean hombres, porque solamente nuestros hombres pueden enseñar a los niños a ser hombres. Only our men can teach our boys to be men. Well, I can be a good man and surround my sons with weak men. They're most likely not going to be like me. Because they're going to do whatever is easiest. Yo puedo ser un buen hombre y tener a mis hijos alrededor de hombres débiles. Y esos niños míos no van a ser como yo. Van a ser como los otros hombres porque eso es más fácil. So I want to surround myself with strong men. I want to be around men that they know how to be manly. They know when it's, you know, when I get to Miami and get around some of our men over there, I come back home and I'm like, yes, Lord. I got around some real men. You know, one thing that I realized about real men, they always surrounded with women. Uh, 
is the truth. I mean, you get there and it's like 20 men and there are 30 women. What in the world? Uh, oh, oh. Why do y'all have so many women? Oh, this is, you know, you got a lot of single guys and you got a lot of girls that want to date the single guys. So they got like three or four girls that are waiting to date the guy. And so we got more girls than we have guys because, you know, we got some good guys. And I'm like, yeah, my daughter needs a good guy, too. How can I get rid of some of the competition? <laughs> For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his flesh, his wife, and they will become one flesh. For this reason, when a man has taught another boy to be a man, he no longer sees the woman as something that he can have. He sees the woman as something that he can take into himself. Cuando el hombre enseña a un niño a ser hombre, ese hombre no ve a una mujer como una, una cosa que puede conseguir, sino que la ve a algo que puede añadir a su vida. When a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing. Notice that marriage is always with a man and a woman. Notice, danse cuenta que un matrimonio siempre es con una, un hombre y una mujer. First of all, that takes Adam and Steve out of the picture. Because a man and a woman, all right, no two women, no two men, no man and a little girl. Uh, no, no woman and a little boy. Well, you can be little and not be the age of little. It has to be a man and a woman. That means that they have to be mature. They have to have some maturity in them. See, we get this thing as 50-50. It's not. There's no marriage 50-50. No hay ningún matrimonio que 50 y 50. So whoever invented that, you liar. El que inventó eso es un mentiroso. I've never met a marriage that was 50-50. Yo nunca vi un matrimonio que era 50 y 50. Think about it. Piénsalo. There are times that the head... The man, if he gets sick, who has to take care of him? The woman does. Is that so 50-50? No, that's not no 50-50. That's like 100-0. Si el hombre está viejo ahora y la esposa lo tiene que cuidar, no me puede decir que ese es 50 y 50. Eso no es 50 y 50. Ella tiene que soportar los 100 y él no da nada. Tiene cero. So marriage is not about this is my share, this is your share. Así que matrimonio no es este tuyo y este es mío. So if you have that concept of marriage, si tienes ese concepto de matrimonio, you are wrong. Because that's not God's concept of marriage. Ese no es como Dios pensó de matrimonios. He made woman to be his helpmate. Hizo la mujer para que sea su ayudante. What does that mean? Honey, I'm here, whatever you need. I'm here to help you. Can you and go and run that company and be the CFO of that company? Because that will help me. Sure, no problem, honey. I'm the CFO of this company. I got a thousand people that work for me. I'm helping my husband. Oh, you're not hearing me. <laughs> See, a lot of women, when they hear that, they feel it has the limitations. I'm limited. I'm just limited in having to be his helper. Girl, nobody put that limit on you. God didn't put it on you. You put that on your own self. You kidding me? My wife gets all these offers for stuff that they're paying her for, and I'm like, go ahead, girl. 
Go ahead, girl, because when we go on vacation, it's going to be easy for me to spend the money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the cost becomes less for me. It's like, who bless her heart, Lord God, let her keep on working. I'm okay because she's helping me. You see, she's my helper. She's helping me. God intends for marriage to be with people who are grown-ups. People get married with this false concept of what marriage is. But I love him. I'll tell you what my mom said. Love and hate are in the same coin. When you flip it, you won't know what you're going to get. The things you love about that person now will end up being the things you hate about them. Oh, he has such a great sense of humor. He's so funny. I love it. He can't take anything serious. <laughs> las cosas que te atraen ahora son las mismas cosas que después vas a odiar. Ay, es que ese ríe tanto y goza tanto la vida. Ay, que me encanta eso de él no toma nada serio. <laughs> Same thing, the person hadn't changed. Just your perspective has changed. Your fathers don't provoke your children to wrath, but nurture them in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Now here we go to the kids. Ooh. Padres no provoques a su hijo a la furia, pero le enseña con disciplina y instrucciones del Señor. Don't provoke them to wrath, but nurture them to discipline. I, I know uh, somebody did something to one of my boys and he raised his hand the other day. And the person looked at him and said, I wish you would. Una persona le pegó a uno de mis hijos y él levantó la mano y la persona le dijo, yo quisiera que los hagas. See, they were moving to wrath, but then they realized that's the wrong place to be. Sí, estaban yendo hacia la furia, pero se dieron cuenta que eso es no donde ellos deben estar. See, that's the odd thing about wrath, is that we did in society, we live in a society right now, that these kids are in wrath for nothing. Vivimos en un tiempo ahora donde los niños se meten en furia por nada. They call me names. Me llamaron nombres. I'm going to get my gun, and I'm going to get all my bullets, and I'm going to go to school, and I'm going to shoot them all. Somebody didn't discipline that child. Voy a mi casa, voy a conseguir mi pistola, voy a llenar, llenar con balas y voy a matar todo. A todos. Porque nadie le dio disciplina a ese niño. There's a lack of discipline that happened at home. And because there was a lack of discipline that happened at home, he didn't know how to react to something negative in his life. Because he didn't have to experience negative at home. He got everything he wanted. Oh, you're the most beautiful, most handsome, the smartest, you're the most gifted. The most, uh, and it, you look at the child, it's like, whoo, boy, he need help. We're not teaching at home. Why? Because we don't have the man. We're missing the man. So what's a woman going to do? She's going to overdo. She's going to overdo because she's trying to do for the lack of the man not being there. Oh, I'm preaching to somebody. I am I not getting beginning the amens, but I know I'm preaching to somebody. There has to be a balance. Boy, sit down. Be quiet. <laughs> Here comes a wife. Don't talk to him like that. <laughs> Honey, I love you with everything in my heart. You're the best thing that has ever happened to me. But I want this boy to grow up to be a man. I don't want him to grow up and be a boy. And right now, he needs to sit down and shut up. Amen. 
Because if I don't do my part as a man, he's going to go to school and shoot everybody. I got to be the man, and I got to hurt his feelings every once in a while. Because he's going to go over there to the school, and they're going to make fun of him. And he needs to understand that because they're making fun of him, that's okay. He'll be just fine. Who here was not made fun of? Raise your hand. If you no one made fun of you, raise your hand. Ooh, I see no hands. No, no hands. Everybody here was bullied at one time or another. Everybody here. Oh, I'm going to switch to mainly English because I noticed that my, my Spanish speakers are understanding me when I speak English. So I don't know why I'm wasting my time speaking Spanish. <laughs> they're looking at me, and when I say something in English, they're laughing at the jokes, and they're shaking their heads. So they don't understand when I'm talking English. So I'm going to just switch to just English because this message is getting really long. <laughs> Here's the reality. I had people make fun of me when I was young. I had my brothers that called me all kind of names. My brothers called me everything but a child of God. They called me everything. And by the time I got to school and they called me something, I'm like, you got to do better than that. <laughs> you are a long way off. That, that was like two years old. Come on, do better. Almost, you almost got it. I heard that one maybe four years ago. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, you can do better. See, I remember I got to the point to where I'd been called everything that I knew how to throw it back. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember what this was part of growing up? That you had to defend yourself with who can say the better comeback? And these kids are like, I got bullied. We all got bullied. We just learned how to deal with the bu bullies. We knew that you look a bully straight in the face and you stand up to the bully. The bully has to back up. We all understood that after a while. I got a job as quick trip. I was in my 20s. And this big kid came in. And I had one of those days. And I'm going to just leave me alone. Just leave me alone. Stop bothering me. Just leave me alone. And he kept at me. I mean, and I'm the manager of the store. And he's walking behind me just telling me how no good I am and how ugly I am and how I have big old lips. And I, I mean, he's just going through and I'm like, please leave me alone. I have one of those days. I just don't want to fool with you. And by like 9 o'clock at night, his beeper went off. That's when we had beepers. So a while ago, we had beepers. Some of you who have no idea, that's okay. That was, that was our phone, beepers. His beeper went off, and I couldn't take it no more. Don't tell me you have a beeper. He says, yeah, I is important people. I said, dude, at your size, you don't even know which role you left that beeper in. You got to do your whole body cavity to find that beeper. You might as well put a microwave around your side so you can find it easily. And everybody was like, ooh, and the juices started flowing. And I just let the river go. And I had an audience around me. And they're like, yeah, oh. And by the time I finished, the boy left my store crying. Notice, I've had people call me all kind of stuff before. It didn't break me. I got to know I have defects. So now I need to promote my good side. There's stuff that's not too good that I need to keep hidden. I remember one time a young lady looked at me and she says, you got big old lips. That's before big lips were in. Because they're in now. They get the shots now. I, I was born with it. So before the lips were in, she was making fun of me. You got those big old lips. I said, don't ever put your head outside the bus window. I'm like, why not? Because the wind, when it 
takes it, it's going to be like a sale. <laughs> You're going to redirect the whole entire bus somewhere else. <laughs> and I, you know what I did to her? I said, that's a good one. No one ever told me that before. That is really good. Nate, when I meet someone with bigger lips than mine, I'm going to use that. <laughs> I didn't get my feelings all hurt. I looked at my dad. I said, I got my lips from him. That's where my lips came from. Well, thank God. I know I came from him because I got his lips. I mean, I were getting fun of for stuff that makes no sense. I hate your laugh. Uh -huh. Can't stand your laugh. Stop laughing. Huh? Why? You laugh even. What? When you laugh, you go, he, 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 he. <laughs> I heard everything. <laughs> And instead of being, poor pity me, oh, I can't laugh no more. <laughs> I was raised by a man to be a man. Yeah. I was not raised by a boy. So because I was raised by a man, if I went to my dad and said, she says she don't like my laugh because I laugh even. <laughs> boy, sit down and shut up. That's not even a thing. <laughs> well, what happened? The dad didn't say anything, and they come to church. He says something mean to me at church. So I'm not coming back no more. I think men, rise up. Come on, men, rise up. Uh, boys, you're going to get disciplined. Boys, you're going to get disciplined. In our houses, you're going you to get disciplined. You were born in the wrong house. If you think you're not going to get disciplined, you're going to get disciplined in our house. Oh, no, we're not going to kill you. We're not, but you'll be the one who'll be able to stand up and look at all the foolishness around you and know that it's foolishness. You'll be able to look at those people that are around you and be like, what, who raised y'all? Well, y'all, did y'all raise yourself? You don't know this. This is simple. People are going to say mean things about you. Get over it. People are going to try to tear you down when you're trying to reach up higher than where you are. Understand. Get over it. Your best friends will not be your family. Matter of fact, the word of God says your enemy shall be they of your own household. Don't think that because you're blood, they're going to be all supportive. Yes, we're here to help you. No, they'll be the one that you don't need to do that. They'll be the one to try to tear you down. Learn all these things now. Train a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not turn from it. Like how you train animals, you train people. I know that sounds mean, but train is train. When I have to train an animal, I have to do what works for that animal. If it's not working for that animal, I need to not do it. See, we have found out that you can train a dog with a tennis ball. Did y'all know you can train a dog with a tennis ball? What in the world? What a cheap way to train the dog. I've been using dog tra treats. That's expensive. Sit. Sit, boo-boo, sit. Here you go. Come on, boo-boo, sit again. Here you go. Sit, boo-boo, sit. There you go. After a while, sit, boo-boo, and I have nothing in my hand. She's smelling my hand like, what's wrong with you? I thought I trained you better. <laughs> See, sometimes we're training the child, but the child is training us. Oh, no, you didn't say that, Pastor. Yeah, I did. I've seen many parents that are in training by their children. And I want to take them to the bathroom. Not the kid. The parent. Take my belt off and just whoop you one good time. 
I watch how your child is training you. I'm going to count to three. One, two, three. I really mean it this time. One, two, three. It's your last chance. One, and I'm there at Walmart just like, ooh, ooh, ooh. If you count one more time. I didn't even count. Elijah would throw himself on the floor at Walmart, just have a fit. Just kicking and screaming, just having a fit, and I'm embarrassed. And I'll pick him up by his little hand. We're walking to the bathroom. Get in that bathroom, and we come out, and you see Elijah. <laughs> You better stop breathing like that. <laughs> Elijah was 23 years old. Could you imagine me taking him to Walmart? He's still having a fit. Oh, it happens. I've seen that. But I want it. And you're going to get it for me. I don't have the money. I don't care where you got to get it from. I want it. You're going to get it. And I want to take my belt off so bad. Just, you know, it's bad when you start feeling that little itch over your stomach because you want to take that belt off. <laughs> it's like someone needs some discipline in this place. We create the monsters we have. Now, I understand special needs. I understand. I understand that some things that are just in some areas and spectrum of learning that some of our kids cannot grab on and adapt to. I understand that. But it doesn't mean that they can't grab and adapt to everything. We have some mouse traps because we've had some mouse issues in our, the back. And I have realized that our mice have learned how to eat the food and not trigger the traps. If a mouse that has a brain smaller than the size of a pea can figure out how to eat the stuff on the trap without triggering the trap, why can my child with an 11 pound brain can't figure out to sit down? Oh, I know I'm not in that area of specialty, but I believe we can train our children to do anything. We have some areas that we mess up really quickly. First of all, we are know-it-alls, but know nothing. Don't tell me how to raise my child. You're the one that needs to hear this. That's just the truth. The person who always says, don't tell me how, is the person that needs to hear how the most. Because the person who is always listening how to do it better is a person that is learning how to do it best. Don't tell me how to raise my own child. It's my, no, it's not your own child. He is God's child. And he gave him to you so you can raise him. At the end, it's God's child, not yours. Raise up his child right. Learn how he wants your child to be. See, when Elijah was little, he started p picking up bugs. He comes with this little beetle and shows his mom. And she knocked the beetle out of his hand. No, ew, okay. Don't pick that up. Honey, come here. Yes. We don't know how God wants this child. He is God's child. And maybe God wants him to know about bugs. So even though I don't like it, and you don't like it, we let him play with bugs. 
Next time he picked up a beetle and came to mom, oh honey, that is nice. Here, no, I don't want it. It's nice. It's a nice beetle. It's that nice color. Mommy, hold it. No, I don't want to hold it. It's nice though. By the time we got Ariel around, mommy beetle, mommy. Oh, that is a nice beetle. That is really pretty. See, she she learned. What did she learn? We're raising them up how God wants them. We want, and you know what I've learned about my kids? Our three original biological children are afraid of nothing. They're afraid of nothing. Lizzie's the one that's most hesitant. She's our youngest. But let her experience it one time. She's hooked. She went on this trip now to Universal Studios and got in her first roller coaster ride. She said, ooh, let's do the next one. And the next one. Let's do the next one. Come on, let's go to that one. I mean, the worse they got, the more she enjoyed it. It's, yeah, I'm ready for these roller coasters. I got this roller coaster stuff. I'm, ooh, I'm glad I can do the roller coaster. Why? She's hesitant, but hesitant has to do with more intellect than fear. See, we have to look at our lives. I'm supposed to raise up these boys that are not afraid. Notice about our boys, they're afraid of everything. They're afraid of everything. Afraid, af afraid of the dark. Who is afraid of the dark? Our, our boys are afraid of the dark. They, I, I kid you not, they are afraid of the dark. Make it dark and put in weird noises. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh, oh my, oh my goodness. They're afraid of everything. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he's given unto us a spirit of power, of love, and a sound mind. Get it right. The first part is power. First thing is power. You're not afraid when you have power. Come on, you're not afraid when you got power. You got power, you're not afraid. Send me in the woods and give me my 45. You know what my 45 has? Power. My 45 has power. <laughs> give me one of those big magnum guns, the big Jamungas one. The one that you, when you shoot, your hand has to go like that. Because <laughs> it's, 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 it's so heavy. Give me one of those and Put me in the woods and let me run into a black bear. You better leave me alone, bear. I got dunamis with me. For those of you that missed it, that means power in Greek. I got dunamis with me. You better leave me alone. I know how to use dunamis. I'm going to name one of my weapons dunamis. That's going to be cool. I mean, dunamis. You leave dunamis alone. It knows how to attack back. That's <laughs> 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 like a robber breaks into this house, and there's a parrot in the house. And the parrot says, watch out for Jesus. And the, the thief is like, Jesus, who is Jesus? He goes in the room and sees an alligator with a mouth wide open. He says, you met Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you understand the power of the alligator's bite? See, God gives you power first. He's not giving you a spirit of fear, but he's giving unto you a spirit of power. What's next? Love. Love one another. Love. Togetherness. A unity. Purpose. Direction. These are concepts of love. What next? Keep your mind sane. Can't stand people that have power and lost their mind. Can't stand it. Why you change that law for? That didn't make no sense. You got power now, but you don't have a sound mind. 
Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God commands you, that your days may be long, that your days may be long, that your days will be long. Let's do the opposite. Dishonor your father and your mother so your days will be short. See, sometimes we learn more in the negatives than we learn in the positives. So if I honor, give honor to my father, and I give honor to my mother, I am promised a long life. But if I dishonor my father, dishonor my mother, my days will be short. I almost said dishonor your cow. I know some of you missed it, but that's from Mulan. Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God commands you that your days may be long and that it may go well with you. Man, just made it worse because I do the opposite. It will not go well with me. So it will go well with you in the land which your Lord your God has given you. Give honor to my father. Give honor to my mother so I can live long and things can go well for me. Who chooses to live a messed up life? Who chooses that? One of the things that I've noticed about our kids is that everything they do is about self-gratification. They just, they just want to gratify them, themselves in every which way possible. Whatever they're going to get into, it's about what I want. I want, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want. In my house, that's the problem that we have. You know, you like it, you steal it, you take it, and it's gone. Do you know where it is? I have no idea because, you know, I put it in some spot somewhere. Uh, all about, I want, I want. Get into porn and then and, and get into masturbation. All I want, I want self-gratification. I want, I want, I want, I want, I want. All right. The Bible says this. He who wins his life will lose it. You think about you all the time? You're going to lose your life. But he who gives up his life for my sake will win it. I'm winning. See, because when I'm giving up my life for what God wants, my life gets fuller. It gets fuller. Do understand what that means. It means that I will grow out of room. And then God has to make more room for me. Oh, some of you, please catch it. Okay. I'm going to run out of room, and he has to make more room for me. Then I'm going to run out of room and he has to make more room for me. And I'm going to run out of room and I am out of arms now so I can't go any further. <laughs> Keep doing your own gratification. You will come to the end of you and you'll come to the end of you quickly. Quickly. Who are the kids who are taking their lives? We have during the COVID now, more teenagers have committed suicide than any other time. I can't live without my friends. Really? R really? You're really suffering because you got to talk to your friends on the phone. You're really suffering because you got to text them. You're really suffering because you've got to see him on Zoom. That's like real suffering, right? No, it's not. That's not suffering at all. We have created these weak children who think that whatever little thing happens to them is their end of their world. Well, I can take you where there is real suffering. I can take you where they've never seen a phone. They have no idea what a Zoom call looks like, and they don't know how to text. I can take you there. Their concern is, I need to eat. Just if I can get a meal for today. But we don't want to know about such things, because we create these weak children who think that any little thing can top them over. What can our adults are going to make? Let's say they survive to adulthood. 
What kind of adults are they going to make? Are they going to make good husbands? Are they going to make good wives? We stop producing quality. Instead, we're now in quantity. But if anyone doesn't provide for his own, and especially his own household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Let's work on it backward. Is worse than the person who does not believe in God. If you created the child by doing the act of creation, and that woman bore a child for you, and you're saying that's her problem, and you're coming to church saying, I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, God says you are worse than anyone who don't believe in him. We have to have a sense of responsibility. I made this. I'm going to take care of it. Until adulthood when he can or she can take care of themselves. That's my responsibility. I made him. See, my two girls, they get married and they get pregnant and that man leaves. God forbid. You know what? Dad is going to be granddad and granddad is going to step up to the plate and help not help my daughter help that child because a good man provides to the third generation oh wait we're missing it right we're missing that a good man provides to the third generation. Okay, I'm the first. My kids are the second. Their kids are the third. A good man provides for his grand grandkids. It doesn't mean that I'm paying their daily costs. It means I'm going to leave them something. We're way past this. I think we need to go back and take some men classes. And I said that yesterday. And you know what I said? I said our women will come to the men classes. I did. I, I believe the women will come to the men classes. They will want to learn how to do the manly task. But our men, they want to avoid such things. They want to keep playing with their toys. Over and over, I just want, I want my toys. I like to play with toys too. I do. I got a boat. I haven't used it in like three years. It's hidden in my yard. Just every time I walk by one day, we'll be back on the lake again. One day, one day. My responsibilities have not allowed me to go play with my toy. So it sits there. One day we will see the water again. One day. But well, we had some good times with our, my toys because I never went on my toy by myself. I took the whole family on there. The church family too has been on my toy because it became our toy. Not just my toy, our toy. You notice that when you are acting like a man, you can't do anything by yourself anymore? You go to stuff and you got an entourage. Go on vacation and have 30 other people with me. Come on, I'm speaking to somebody. A man that starts acting like a man is not alone. A man will have a community of people because the people are looking for real men. Children love having structure. They do. They love how it's like, okay, this is how I'm supposed to act. I got it. Talk to Ariel. Ariel said, you know, we did something a, a few weeks ago and put someone under some discipline and she was saying, man, this is really working. This is really working that. 
What's working? Structure. The structure is working. Kids want structure. They feel comfort in structure. You let them do what they want to do. Stay out of my room. Mom, this is my room. And slam the door. Couldn't be in my house. First thing I'll be is like, what you doing? Taking my door. Because you're in my house. And you're not going to be slamming my door in my face. Because this is my door. Yeah, uh, what are you doing? I'm taking my clothes. What do you mean my clothes? I'm going to give you the clothes that you're going to wear every single You want to act like a child. I'm going to treat you like a child. So we're going to take away all this extra clothes. And tomorrow morning, I'm going to give you what you're going to wear to school. Because this is my clothes. In my house. Put all that stuff up and pull out some ugly stuff. The next day, you're going to wear that to school. I can't wear that. Oh, yeah, you are. You're going to wear that. You're going to wear nothing. Which one is going to be more embarrassing? Because this is my house, and these are my rules. And you didn't want to live according to my rules that made things very easy for you. So now I'm going to make things hard. And I'm going to take away your choices. Off with the computer, off with the phone, my phone, my computer, my house. Now, you'll get things as you earn them. You earn it, we'll let you pick your clothes. You earn it, you get to have some privacy, but we're not putting a door yet because you might not be ready. We'll put a little curtain because this is my house. What are you doing? Structure. You're teaching how things are in a structure. Pastor, that will never work. Actually, I wrote a paper on it. That one person did that, and then a lot of people heard, read her story, and they mimicked it. And do you know she had 100% success? A hundred percent. After the child was disciplined and got her door back, her computer back, her phone back, her clothes back, she was happy that, Mom, I want to thank you for how you've provided for me. I want to thank you for my phone. When she invited her friends over to her house and her friends were acting snooty, she says, I'm sorry. I thought I wanted you guys over my house, but I think y'all need to go home because you don't appreciate what your parents give you. Amen. Yes! It worked. Structure. Our kids need structure. How we do that? Take stuff away. Take it away. I don't want to do that. That takes so much patience. Yes. Welcome to parenthood. The Bible says a blessed is the man whose quiver is full. This means that it's a blessing to have all your children because your arrows in the quiver. Now, we start to think of going to the, to the hunting place and buy arrows. No. Understand this is not what God meant. God meant that you got to take that rock and begin to cut off the rock and chip off the pieces of the rock that you don't want on the rock because as long as they have the wrong pieces they cannot penetrate the flesh correctly and once you get that arrow tip in accordance to how it's supposed to go nice and sharp sharper than a knife and when it hits that target it's going to go right through it now you got to find a straight stick and it can't be just any stick it has to be one that can float in the air by doing some motion so you grab some stick and you you test it and make sure and once you make sure you sit down you scrape off all the excess bumps that uh, keep it from being aerodynamic. Now, once you do that, you're going to put that arrow tip and you're going to put it into that, that wooden and then you're going to put some string around it to tighten up together. And now you need to go looking for some feathers. 
Come on, I'm, I'm preaching here. So now you got to go look and find some feathers. And you're even looking at the birds saying, I may have to shoot you down because I need your feathers. And once you get some good feathers, you got to separate them in the middle. And it takes patience to separate in the right middle because you want to use both sides of it. But you need two feathers to be perfectly sized and even. And then you're going to put that at the very end. And God says, those are your children. The arrows that you've worked to make, to perfect, so they don't miss the target. Blessed is the house whose quiver is full of it. And what do I have to do with my arrow next? I got to find the target and take that child out of my quiver and place it within my hands and release. We had one that was released today, and I said, hey, this is what we do. We raise them up. We make them, form them. We let them, we aim at the target, and time for you to go. I made you so you won't miss. I worked hard, so you'll always be on point. I made every effort to find the best material possible. I, every time I hit that arrow, I made sure not to crack it so you can be, withstand going through the target. And it's time for you to go. Parenting is not for wimps. If we were to parent in such a way with such passion, to know that my whole journey of parenting is to let you go. To pour everything in you so the day will come where I say, bye-bye. And when you say bye-bye, they soon come right back with another one. Meet your granddad, who is just like you. Enjoy this little one, because they grow up fast. And it won't be long before you got to release this one. May God richly bless you.